Hey there, baseball fans, and today I am Ben, as usual, but I am un unwrapping the rarest of the rare 1990 Don Russ baseball cards. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I have 1990 unopened Don Russ baseball card facts. Just kidding, these are really easy to find and super cheap to buy, and everybody just wants to get rid of them. So, we're going to open them up and see what we find. Or see if we're an instant winner in one of these prizes, but not for that one. Let's see what we got going on. You know, I happen to like this uh, set. Red border, cursive writing, a very 90s kind of dots and splatter paint for some reason. Nothing much there. This one's already kind of partially open. As usual, I'm looking for Sean Dunstan, Brian Sandberg, Mark Grace, and Nolan Ryan, and of course, any All-Stars or um, Hall of Famers like Cal Ripken. So we'll put that aside for another time. And we'll also be looking for anybody that sparks my interest, and I, and I find myself wondering, whatever happened to that guy? Probably my favorite part of opening these old cards is finding out what happened to these guys that I used to see their names as a kid. Well, not a whole lot going on here. You know, we've seen enough Mark Lemke, maybe we put him aside. I wonder what happened to Mark Lemke. He had his uh, very important uh, postseason with the Braves. In the early 90s, I remember watching that series, Braves versus Pirates specifically. Quite a, quite a playoff series. Eric Davis, my best friend growing up, Justin, his favorite player. And this is a really, there you go, Goose Gossage. Let's just check him out real quick. Uh, strikeouts, 1,379. Not bad. We got an ERA of 182 in 1985. And 307 saves. Not a bad career, I'd say. This is really, really pretty, pretty poor showing so far. That's the risk you take when you're opening cards. You never know what you're going to get. Oh, there we go. Ryan Sandberg, MVP card. This will go aside for my personal collection. John Smoltz. There you go. Put him aside. John Smoltz. Put him aside. Hojo. Don Mattingly. All right, so this pack turns it around. Gary Carter, Albert Bell, or Joey Bell, if you want to call him that. This is the first year I think that they did the instant winning in here. Um, you know what I always thought was funny? So I know that, uh, you know, Don Russell Fleur joined the game in like 81 and after, you know, breaking up Topps Monopoly with the playing of the baseball card game. And there was uh, oh, Carlton Fisk completely off center, but we'll take it. Um, Harold Baines, another Hall of Famer. And there was some a loophole that uh, Fleer and Don Russ Calrickin and the Yaz Kari Stremski, a loophole that, that Don Russ and Fleer exploited because Tops was the only brand that could manufacture cards and put them out with um, confectionery in them, and so. Don Russ and Fleur just said, okay, well, we'll just put puzzle pieces or stickers in there. No problem. And my question is, they're selling these cards. Do they really not understand that people want to be... Oh, look, another Ryan Sandberg, all-star. I'll take it. That people just wanted the cards and they didn't really care about the puzzle pieces, the gum, or the stickers. Um, 
Maybe it must have taken them, I guess, years to quite to figure that out, but it just seems so odd to me that we're so hung up on what comes with the cards when the cards are the thing. Paul Molitor, Steve Avery, rated rookie. Harold Reynolds, Reynolds, who is, of course, an ESPN commentator now. So we know what happened to him. All right, just a couple more to go. I got to say, this is a couple of Ryan Zambos, uh kind of saved it for us, but went through a nice dry spell there. Not a lot of good stuff coming out of these packs. Just because they're uh, cards that are not rare at all doesn't mean that we shouldn't be seeing some good stars come out of them. Oh, Tony Gwynn. One of the greatest hitters of his generation. And here's our last pack here. Let's see what we got. I feel like I could always get 1990 Don Russ packs. It's really easy to find them. They're super cheap. And they're still fun to look through. Paul Kilgus. Howard Johnson. Mike Greenwell. Well, whoever ends up with these cards, unless they're a huge fan of one of those guys, they're going to be like, oh, there's not much in here. All right, so we've got a couple of Ryan Sandbergs, small stack of Stars and Hall of Famers, and then we've got Mark Lemke. So according to this, he'd only played 30 games up to this point. And he's from Utica. Utica, New York, and... Lives, lived in Whitesboro, New York at the time. Not a huge guy. 5'9", 167, switch hitter. So let's pull this up here and see what Mark Lemke is up to. There he is, American baseball player. And current broadcaster. There you go. He stayed in baseball then. Nickname is The Lemmer. <laughs> Uh, won the 95 World Series with the Braves over the Indians. Let's just look and see what his career amounted to. So, played from 88 to 98, batted 246, 32 home runs, and 270 RBIs. Just played for the Braves and the Red Sox. Just one short year for the Reds, Red Sox. And played in 62 postseason games. There you go, in four World Series. And one with the Braves in 95. Led all Braves players with the 417 batting average in the 91 World Series. That's the one I remember him from. Um, and he left the Braves after the 97 season. Signed with the Red Sox. While trying, trying to turn a double play with the White Sox. Against the White Sox, he was injured in a collision. And he suffered a concussion that finished his season and essentially ending his major league career. Oh, what a terrible way to go out. Uh, oh wait, he, so after his career was over, he signed in 1999 as a knuckleball pitcher with the New Jersey Jackals. He was an infield coach. Went 5-1 and one with a 668 earned run average. That is amazing. So he switched from being a second baseman to a knuckleball pitcher. Good for him. I, I love those stories of like, Something doesn't quite work out the same way you want it to, and then find another way. Through an independent league record, nine wild pitches and successful at-bats. Uh, now he hosts the Braves pregame show on the Braves Network. I guess I, if I lived in Atlanta, I would know that. Um, start a run up for the Braves. Huh. Well, there you go. Mark Lemke. So there's a lesson in all that for you, for, for everybody here from Mark Lemke. You know, do your best, and when time, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. So became a knuckleball pitcher and then a broadcaster. Mark Lemke, I've got a new respect for you. Um, so thanks for that lesson. Thanks for joining me today. I'll catch you later.